Mehmet Karakulugu, who was I mispronounced terribly. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, that's fine. Who, as you might tell, is a Turk. And he's the founding board member of Global Relations Forum and a founding partner of Kanunum and also chairman of Koran Consulting. So, Mehmet, thank you. over to you. Thank you. Actually, I'm a Turk, probably with an Egyptian name. Memduh is very Egyptian, as I understand. Uh, it's good to be here. It's uh, great to be in Abu Dhabi. Great to be, uh, again, a guest of the World Policy Conference. So I thank the organizers, Thierry, uh, and of course, Abu Dhabi for hosting us. When I'm invited, whenever I'm invited to speak on a Middle East panel, I feel both anxiety and intrigue. Anxiety because my usual life during the year, I focus on issues like digital currencies, the global energy situation, so more the geoeconomics part of the world or geotechnology. Uh, so Middle East, I don't have prepared remarks. I have prepared remarks for so many things, but not for this one. So that's the anxiety. And maybe the, that's better. Maybe that is better. That is the intrigue. The intrigue is that I know so much happens in this part of the world that when I t sort of take a distance and look at the region for a full year, very unusual patterns emerge, and then I'm intrigued. It's just, it induces dopamine, the expectation that I will get something interesting at the end of it. I think I'm the only one from my panel of last year, and we ended last year, I was here again on the Middle East panel, uh, saying that there is something in the air. There is something good in the air, uh, that there is, the tensions are receding and there is a sense of de-escalation. That proved to be, I think, reasonably accurate. This year, I mean, we did get the main tensions, quite a few of the main tensions sort of calmed down. Uh, Turkey being at the center of quite a few of them, the Turkey UAE, the Turkey Saudi, Turkey Egypt, then within GCC, the Qatari Saudi. I mean, many of these tensions that burdened us seem to have softened at least. And that was the expectation. So I think we got that right. And there is a truce in Yemen, however tenuous. The Libya situation is, you know, again tenuous, but at least we're not in an active war situation. The Syria situation is complicated, but still it is what I may call still a sort of a frozen state of affairs, not a sort of a, a war, a real, real war. So uh, this year, my concerns are really looking forward are related to the Iranian situation and to the situation in Iraq and Lebanon. But uh, let me go back this, to the synopsis of this. There was there is something in the air. I think it was accurate, but it was incomplete. Because what I didn't realize at the time is that the something good in the air was predicated on uh, pragmatism on the side of many of these actors. It wasn't wise long-termism, but it was simple pragmatism. And what, it, what turns out to be the case after looking at this past year, I think actually it was hyper-pragmatism. That is what we are facing. It is unanchored pragmatism. And that worries me, because I think that kind of pragmatism is ineffective to deal with long-term issues, it corrodes institutions, and it makes us unable to deal with these long-term challenges. Before I explain myself, let me just give you the punchline, because this year, before, more than before, I felt Thierry wants us to be precise, concise, open, get to the point. So let me get to the point. Get to the point. I'll, I'll tell you what the point is. Well, I think, I mean, now we are at a stage where Middle Eastern players, including my country, including Saudi, including GCC, we, we, these countries feel empowered for different reasons, and it is, these countries are in a hyper-pragmatic state. Short-termism, swift maneuvers, deals, bargains, they are the currency of the moment. It is normal for the West, but especially for Europe, to feel it's being left out of this game. But I think fast-paced bargaining is not the European forte or the comparative advantage. So I think this is a phase and we'll need the European institutions and long-term structures to survive the phase that we are going through. I think that Europe should not compromise what it's good at, we'll need those norms, and it should use those structures in this phase to bring in the Middle East players to the table for long-term problems. 
Now, that is the punchline. That is my main okay. theme. Shall I stop there or you uh, want me to? A couple, couple more minutes. couple of more minutes. But Briefly, where I stand, yes, we are in a phase of transitions. This is when we need foreseeability to coordinate actions when everything is changing. But instead, we get anxiety across the actors. Everybody is uh, trying to, it's, it's a it's climate of mistrust, knee-jerk pragmatism is everywhere. And norms, balances, alliances that give some structure to this world are eroding before our eyes. So it's a world of naivety and uncertainty that we see. And I think we can see it, I mean, I can't go into it, but I won't. The global energy markets is a very good example of that because I think the main axes of that structure have been broken and everybody is after self-sufficiency, which makes that whole structure very inefficient. The reaction, what can you do when all this happens? You can go for Cartesian rationality. I think that's what uh, uh, Thierry was hinting at. I don't think it's possible. You can push someone to absorb all the risk. That's America not happening. You can have by insurance, you can say, I'll give you security guarantees. You give me energy stability. That is not working. You can have portfolio of com countries you work with, Russia, China, US, that is happening. And finally, you can just go for incrementalism, fast maneuvering, and that, I think, is the name of the Great. game. Okay? So, I mean, let me ask you a much more specific question. Please. You have Erdogan, who's yes. going to have an election soon, who yes. seems very shaken by this prospect. Uh, he's balancing <clears throat> all, many, many powers. <clears throat> he is annoying a lot of people. NATO, America, Russia too. He's playing footsie with Russia. He's not doing sanctions. Um, can he keep going like this with a tanking economy? Or is he going to start another war in northern Syria or with Greece? What do you think? No. Just I, on breath. I mean, very simply, no. There will not. I do not think. Erdogan or Turkey will start a war. I think these problems in Syria and in Greece, they are actually manageable with under this hyper-pragmatism that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They are not, they, they can be contained within that framework. Mm -hmm. Erdogan has enough uh, room for maneuver with all the actors and all the instruments he has that we can get uh, security on our southern border. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is with Greece. That's a Right. You know, unnecessary uh, problem. I think these can be managed without a war. Okay. Do you think he will allow himself to lose the election? Well, it's a democratic system. It's an election. Uh, so okay. if he loses, That's he fine. loses. I, okay. yeah. You know, okay. on verra, as they say in France. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. Next.